we're going to start our icebreakers game. The first thing I want to do is I want to open up my Multimedia F Fusion 2 game. So when I click as new, then I'm going to click on frame, uh, application one here. Then I go insert new frame. I'm going to do this again, insert new frame. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to re, I'm going to call frame one um, start. So I'm going to go rename. Just call it start. Then I'm going to rename frame two game. Then I'm going to right click and rename frame three end. Okay, obviously the next thing I do is I rename my application icebreaker. So I click right click it, I click rename, then put in here icebreakers. You see I've got a underscore on there. That's because in uh, programming you don't um, use spaces in words. So I'm going to save this. So I click my save button here. Now I go find me project 2 in my um, game design uh, library under resources. See there it automatically took me there. It's been, been there today. And I just click save. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my library. I'm going to go view, toolbars, turn on my library window. Now I'm going to right click down here and click new. Then I'm going to go find my library and you will have this if you did the downloads from the course overview section. I click libraries and go into documents. I'm going to go into my documents. I'm going to go into my game design folder. I'm going to go into resources. I'm going to go into project two. And there is my icebreakers library. I click OK. So now I just need to call my new library icebreakers. So it's this new library. I just type in the word icebreakers. Uh, library. Now we're in lab two. Let me, let's look at our light icebreakers library. I click on icebreakers. I double click this. I look at all the objects we're going to use. Now, when we were in um, the last game, we built our own objects. So we're going to use some objects that were built for us. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to double click the start game here. The, the start, and I'm going to put, see what says start background, I'm going to put this object in here. So I'm just going to drag and drop it on the screen. I don't have to worry about lining it up because I'm going to line it up this way. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to align and frame, and I'm going to go vertical center. Then I'm going to right click it. I'm going to go align and frame, and go horizontal center. Then I'm going to lock it down so it, it can't be moved. I just click lock. So then I'm going to go into the ant, the game itself, and we put that background in. Double click. Here's where it says ant, uh, start. Um, here's the game background. I just drag it on there. Once again, right click. I'm going to line and frame. I'm going to vertical center it. Right click, line and frame, horizontal center it. Right click and lock. That's all you do. Next, I'm going to double click the end. I can take the end background, drag it up, right click it, go align and frame, vertical center, right click, align and frame, horizontal center, then I'm going to right click and lock it. The next thing we're going to do is add a start button. So let's go to the start menu. Okay, what I'm going to do, I just double clicked on start. So now I'm going to drag my start button up here. Just put it somewhere. And now what I also have to do is add 
the action to it. So what I do is go view. I have to go to my view menu. Now what am I going to look at? I'm going to look at my event editor. What I do is I click on the new condition. And what I'm going to add is I'm going to add a, a mouse movement. So I click on the mouse. Right click. And we're going to choose uh, user clicks. What happens when the user clicks? Left button. So what do we want to happen when the user clicks the start button? We want them to go to the next frame, don't we? So then I right click here and I just click next frame. So now I'm going to try it out. I'm going to click run application. When I click the start button, it takes me to the next frame. That's what's supposed to happen. Now we're in lab three and we're going to add this, the snowboards and the a snowball to the game. So I'm going to go to the game backdrop. I guess I'm going to go through view, frame editor, and I'm going to go to the game board. So we're going to put in our um, left snowboard. Just drag and drop it up here. I'm going to right click this and I'm going to align in frame on the left. Then I'm going to right click, align in frame on the bottom. Next, I'm going to take the right snowboard, I'm going to put it up there, right click this, click align in frame on the right, right click, and align in frame on the bottom. Next, I'm going to take this top snowboard. Now, make sure it says top snowboard up here. Don't put the paddle up there. Click the top snowboard, drag it up here. Now I prefer to kind of visually do this because um, it's a little harder to see. I kind of center it visually at the very top between those two. So now what all I need to do is put the snowball in. I drag my snowball somewhere on the stage here. Now I'm going to click the uh, properties icon here. Wait a minute, need to select it first. Then I click the running man up here. Now it's going to have a movement. What kind of a movement? It's going to have a bouncing ball movement, correct? Sure it's correct. Now you don't want the player to lose the game right away, so you're going to change the initial direction. Click this up here. You don't want it to do all that. You, you want to restrict its first movement, so I'm going to let it go here, 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 and here, here, here first. So that's what I do. I just restrict the movement. So I just I clicked on initial direction and then I erase the arrows it could go in and put the directions I wanted to restrict it to. Now I gotta create my event. So I'm going to go into my event menu. So I go view event menu event editor. So I'm gonna um, right click the condition with the snowball. What kind of condition? A uh, uh, collision with another object. So it's going to be with the uh, left snowboard. I go OK. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the snowball. It's going to be a collision with another object. This is going to be the other side, the right snowboard. I go OK. Then I'm going to do a new condition, which is going to be a collision between the snowball and what? Um, it's going to be another object. It's going to be the top board. You can hardly see that one. I know that. I'm going to click OK. So now we put in our bounces. So if it, the ball hits the border, it's supposed to do what? It's supposed to bounce. So you right click move and choose movement, then choose bounce. Okay, we do the same thing with the other two objects. I right click here by the ball, and it collides with the other side, other side paddle. I go movement. Bounce. I want it to bounce off that uh, snowboard. I want it to bounce off the top snowboard. So I right click the ball, I click movement, and I go bounce. So the ball is going to bounce off the side, right side paddle, left side paddle, and the top paddle. So let's see what this looks like. Run, application, click my start button. You see there the ball bounces against the paddles. Let me do it again. 
So now the next, ob next thing we have to do is we have to return the ball from the bottom. So now we're in the next lab. So I'm going to go over to view and go back to my frame editor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the paddle here in the bottom. So I'm going to take my paddle, make sure you're not doing this, this, the, any of the snowboards, just drag it up here. There's your paddle. You're going to give the paddle a property, so I click on the paddle, and I click make sure the man selected, I choose static, and I go down to mouse control. Now before we had this control by the keys, this, this, uh, the, the ball in the last game, this one we're having the paddle controlled by the mouse. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the movement. So I'm going to pull this down and click Edit Movement. Now this box is the box within which that the you're going to um, move the mouse. So we want to change that. So I'm going to grab one of the sizing handles. I'm going to bring it out here. I want touching that end of the board here. The, here I want the touching this end of the board here. I don't want so much play going up and down. So I want to limit the up and down play. So I'm going to come to a sizing handle and I'm going to make it smaller below. I'm going to make it smaller above. Restrict it up and down but give it plenty of options side by side. And I'm going to go OK. And now you understand since you're controlling the um, paddle with the mouse you're not going to be able to end the application. So we want to be able to end the application. So what we're going to do is we're going to go view the event editor and I want to make a new condition so I'm going to click this. Now when I press the escape key I want this to end the game. So I right click this and I choose the keyboard upon pressing a key so I choose escape. So now upon pressing escape what I want to happen. So I right click on a storyboard that has a white horse in it up here, a checkerboard with a right horse, and I go in the application. Now I want to, the um, snowball to bounce off the board, off the paddle, so I'm going to um, click this. I'm once again doing the snowball, right click that, collisions, Collisions with another object. What object? It's this one right here. Make sure you choose the paddle. Not this guy, the top snowboard. You already did that guy. Click uh, click OK. Right the right click. Click OK. And then you just right click the snowball and click movement, bounce. So we're done with Lab 4. Let's test out our game. We're going to go Run, Application, click Start. Then you use your paddle to bounce the snowboard, the, to bounce the snowball. That's how it works. Then you, let's press Escape to get out of here. That's how it works.